breaking news, you can be even more kissable than you are right now with Lolo Lips by Barmaids. The makers of the exquisite Lolo Bar has one of the best lip balms available. Some lip balms can cause your skin to dry out if you stop using them or if you lose them. And let's face it, we all lose them. This product doesn't force you to reapply in order to maintain the healthy balanced levels of moisture ideal for beautiful lips. It comes in eight tasty flavors with no paraffins, no fillers, no dyes, just natural lip moisturizer that has everything your lips want and nothing they don't. I dare anyone to try it and not feel like an addict. Kiss me, Lolo, I'm in love. Hi and welcome to Knitting Blooms. Today is Friday, March 8th and this is episode number 97. My name is Tina, also known as Bloomy Knitter, and welcome to the show today. Today is going to be a very short show. <laughs> um, it's a mo mostly going to be just the tutorial because really I don't have any knitting to show you today. There has been knitting progress, but um, I only worked on two projects. Actually, I worked on three projects t this week, but didn't get much um, progress done on, on them. I did work on the Even Star. I got seven repeats done so far on the Even Star. Seven repeats of the border. Showed that to you a couple weeks ago. I will show it to you again next week, but um, I'm not going to show it to you this week. I also worked on some basic socks. And I finished um, the second slipper for Steve, but I haven't seen, seamed it up yet. And I started a slipper for myself. But I think I still have to finish the, the, the top part of the slipper and also um, do the bumper. But I will show you those next week. The reason why I don't have any real knitting progress to show you this week is because I have been spending a lot of time walking. I think it was last week I mentioned that I was trying to um, do so many steps per day. And... Yesterday, I had a challenge for myself, and it was to do 40,000 steps. 40,000 steps is close to near 20 miles. And it takes a lot of time to walk 20 miles. Now, I do do my workout in the morning where I run, and I also do a little bit of walking. And I can usually get in between seven and eight miles in the morning, and then the rest throughout the day, just miscellaneous walking. But I do have to have a plan in order to do that, and it still takes a lot of time. So yesterday, when I was doing all this walking, I would probably sit down for no more than a half hour at a time, and then I was up walking for 15 or 20 minutes trying to just get the walking done. So needless to say, there wasn't a lot of knitting going on. I did do one repeat yesterday on the Even Star, and mostly when I was walking, I was working on my basic socks. But I think over the next eight weeks or so, um, it's going to be pretty much the same thing because my goal for the next eight weeks, because today starts the next Biggest Loser Club um, boot camp, I have a challenge. I have challenged myself to do. 200,000 steps a week. Yes, that's right. 200,000 steps a week. So that means that I'm going to be walking anywhere from um, 20,000 to over 40,000 steps a day. I'm only going to do 40,000 once a week and then I'm going to after I do my 40,000 like today, after I did 40,000 yesterday, Today I only um, did, did about 20,000 because I needed a break. I needed a rest, like a rest day. But I still was going to try and get in 20,000, which I'm very close. I think I'm just under 20,000 right now. And I still have some walking to do around the house this afternoon. Um, so yeah, so I've been doing a lot of walking. <laughs> and um, I'm kind of enjoying it. I'm, I'm loving being able to track this kind of thing, and um, I have lost about 10 pounds since the beginning of the year, and I'm just doing my thing. And like I mentioned, t today starts the next um, Biggest Loser Club boot camp, 
and I spent a lot of time today just reviewing my spreadsheet from the previous eight weeks to see where I can make improvements and how I can lose more weight um, during the next eight weeks because I really only lost um, just under seven pounds um, over these past eight weeks. The last two weeks I only lost um, half a pound. So, and I think it had a lot to do with the fact that the last three weeks I've been really ramping up my exercise um, time as well as my steps. So, that's been fun. And then the rest of the day today was spent um, working on some Nitopia stuff. So that's also going to take a lot of my time over the next um, six weeks because I think Nitopia is in six weeks. I think it's 40, 40 or 40. One, 40 days, I think, until Nitopia. So things are going to get rather crazy over the next few weeks, and um, I'm hoping that I will still have stuff to show you. But I am still going to record my tutorials. Um, today's tutorial is going to be the first part of the sock tutorial. It starts with a short row. Um, it's I'm sorry. It starts with a toe-up sock, and so um, I'll go through the process of, of that. And then in two weeks, probably, we will have the short row heel. So that will give you time to do your, do your, um, your toe and then work up your foot. So that's the tutorial for today. Um, the other thing that I have to talk about today is the dialogue. I am really enjoying seeing what everybody is creating in that dialogue thread. It's really inspiring. I would like to do um, some dyeing this weekend. I'm hoping that I have some time this weekend to do some dyeing. I have some yarn that I would like to over dye, and that is going to be my next tutorial as well. Um, if I can get that recorded this weekend, then I will post that one next week. Um, but I think that would be fun is to do a um, like an over dyeing tutorial. So that's my plan for this weekend, but. I'm also going to be doing drywall. Last week and I said that I was going to do some drywall um, sanding and I did that on Sunday and that went quite well but I had not finished mudding everything for the second time because the last time I did any mudding I ran out of mud. So I haven't done any mudding since then so I have to finish up the mud tomorrow and then re-sand that area. I'll touch up the stuff that I sanded um, last weekend also tomorrow and hopefully on Sunday I can re-sand everything and hopefully by next weekend I will be able to prime. Um, that will be a major, major accomplishment because this has been going on far too long. Um, so yeah, so I'm hoping I can get some dyeing done this weekend. And then coming up starting April 1st, we're going to have the trials with lace uh, knit along. Now, I have mentioned to a few people that if you are um, new to lace knitting or you think that you might have some difficulty getting the shawl completed within the 30-day um, time frame from April 1st to April 30th, you are welcome to start the trials with lace knit along prior to April 1st. It just has to be finished in April in order to count towards prizes. So if you are a slow knitter or new to lace or what have you or you have stuff going on in April that you don't think you'll be able to finish it up in a month, you are more than welcome to start it now if you'd like to do that. And the last thing before I turn you over to the tutorial is going to be a little bit of talk about barmaids. Um, as you know, we've been doing barmaids coupons for quite some time, um, but I asked them if they could shake it up a bit. And for the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some different types of um, drawings. This week is going to be a drawing for uh, five uh, Lolo lips. So if you'd like to try the Lolo lips, if you have never tried the, the Lolo lips, then um, check out the thread in the group and post that you would like to um, to try those out. I love the Lolo lips. Um, I like especially in the winter time, my lips are always so dry. Um, there it's a really great product. And I was hoping that the um, candles had come today, 
but um, they haven't come yet. Maybe they still will, but um, I haven't received them yet. So I will hopefully be able to show those to you next week. So we don't have a drawing for the barmaids today because I forgot to put in the thread last week. So the drawing will be next week for the five free Lolo lips. So go and check out that thread and um, post to enter to win. So now we'll go ahead and I'll take you into the tutorial. Oh, I might as well tell you about spinning. I did a little bit of spinning this week, but not, again, not much to even talk about and nothing really to show for it. Um, so back to the tutorial. I kind of feel like I'm scatterbrained today because I have nothing to show you and I've just been rambling about my steps. <laughs> so here's the tutorial on the... Um, the beginning part of a toe it is going to be done with magic loop so if you are not a magic looper you will have to um, convert it to either two circulars or um, double points but here is the tutorial on the toe up the beginning of the toe in this video I am going to start you off on the basic socks. This tutorial is the start of several lessons on how to do toe up socks using a um, Turkish cast on and a short row heel. We are going to be using my um, formula that I use for my basic socks. You can find this pattern on Ravelry. It is available for a $3 download, or you can just follow along um, with the video. I do include a lot of notes with the pattern, and um, I'm going to try and share most of that with you during this video, but I can't share everything that I because there's just so much information to share. But I will try and give you the gist of um, how to use this pattern um, and be able to calculate your gauge and be able to create your basic sock. The first thing that you're going to need to start off with is you're going to need to measure your foot. You will need to know your foot circumference around the largest part of your foot, usually the ball of your foot or maybe your ankle and also the length of your foot from toe to heel. Uh, those measurements are very important because we are going to be using those to calculate uh, how many stitches that you need to use for your sock, or around your sock, and also um, to figure out where you're going to stop for your short row heel. Now, you can do your gauge swatch with your yarn and your needles if you like. I prefer to just go ahead and start my toe, and then once I get a good uh, portion of my toe completed, then I can calculate my gauge. Socks are such a small little thing that if you find that as you're working up the foot a little bit and you find that it's a little too tight or a little too loose, you can just rip back a little bit and make the adjustments. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and start you off with the cast on and how we go about doing the increases. And then we will calculate our gauge for this particular sock. Okay, so I'm going to be using the magic loop method to do these socks. If you are going to use DPNs, you can also um, still use this same cast on technique with DPNs. You will just need three needles for the DPNs, uh, two to do your cast on and then one to do your stitches. So to do the Turkish cast on, which is what I like to do best, is you're just going to put the um, slip knot on one of the needles and I hold this needle on the bottom. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your, your yarn from your ball, not, your, um, not the tail, the working yarn, and you're going to wrap it from back to front around your needle. However many times um, that you want for the number of stitches that will be at the bottom of your, he of your toe, the tip of your toe. Now, if you like a pointier toe, you will cast on less stitches. If you like a 
um, more square toe, you will cast on more stitches. If you have never made a sock before and you have no idea how many stitches you're going to be increasing to, my suggestion is to cast on between 12 and 16 stitches. If you know approximately if you're going to want to do an odd or an even number depending on um, a stitch pattern that you might want to include in your pattern um, or in your sock, then cast on an odd or an even number here. I'm going to go ahead and cast on um, 14 stitches. And actually, when I say 14 stitches, it's 14 stitches on each side. But it's actually just 14 loops. So once you have wrapped the yarn around 14 times, then you're ready to begin your first row. And it's very important that you have your uh, yarn at the top of your work. So you've come around the bottom of your work and you're coming around to the top um, to start off with. Now, the first thing you want to start with is you're going to pull the needle out that has the slip knot on it. So you're going to pull the needle out that has the slip knot on it and you're going to just knit into that first stitch. That's not really a stitch, it's just a loop, but you just have to um, make it into a stitch. And you're going to knit across these, these loops. So we'll have 14 stitches across. And once you get to the end, you're going to turn so that you can work the other side. And if you know anything about magic loop, um, you know that you have to just keep moving your needles. So we've already done that. That was only half of the, of the round. Now we're going to finish up the round on the other side to create the two sides of the sock. But this slip knot, we are not going to work the slip knot at all. We are going to skip that one. I like to just leave it on the needle until I am ready to um, work that first stitch and then let it pop off when um, I take the first stitch off. I just want to make sure that it's out of the way. And I'm going to knit across these 14 stitches as well. And once you have finished, you will see that you have 14 stitches on each side. You can just take that slip knot right out of there. You will have 14 stitches on each side and you are ready to begin the increases for your toe. So now I'm ready to do the increases for my toe. And I always do my increase one stitch in. Now, if you are not... Um, particular about having both sides of your sock look the same, then you can do your increase any way you would like. But this is how I do my increases. I like my increases to mirror each other. So I will knit the first stitch and then I will do a lifted left leaning decrease or increase um, here. And how I do that is I lift up, I lift up the um, the bar that's in between and I put it on my needle. But then in order to make it left leaning, I need to knit through here. Um, and what that does is it, it makes it lean and it also um, twists the stitch. And then I will work my way across. And right before the last stitch in this row, I will do a 
right leaning. And this way I pick up from the back and then I just slip my needle into the front of that stitch, kind of like knitting through the back loop. And then one more and turn. And then I do the increases on this side as well. So I will be doing the decreases or the increases on this side as well. The same way. I will knit the first stitch on this side. And here I want to do a left leaning decrease. Or sorry, I keep saying decrease. I want to do an increase. I'm going to lift it and put it on the on the um, needle there. And then I'm going to kind of pull it forward just so that I can get my needle in on this side to knit. And I'll work my way across. And one stitch before here, and I will do a right leaning. I will lift it from the bottom and stick my left needle in from uh, back to front and then knit that stitch. Now I will have 16 stitches on either side. Once you do one increase round, then you do one um, straight round just of knits. And as you continue to work, you just make sure that you can keep your... Um, your tail on the outside. I like it on the outside because then I know when my tail is on the outside and it is on the left side of my work, then I know that I'm at the beginning of my round. That's how I judge which is my right side, which is the top of my foot, and which is the bottom of my foot. So I will go ahead and work one row of plain um, stockinette here and then um, I will come back and allow you to watch the increases again. Okay, so here we are back at the beginning of the round and we're ready to do another increase round. So again, I will knit the first stitch. I will do my left leaning increase by lifting the stitch or lifting the bar, putting it on the needle, and then just tugging on it just a little bit just so I can get my needle back through the front of this stitch. And I'll work my way across. And then here we are at the end of this row here. I will lift up here lift the bar between, and then insert my needle, and this will be a right leaning increase. And then I will turn. Now one thing I want to mention here is that when you are, whether you're using um, double points or um, magic loop or what have you. When you knit this first stitch on this, row, on this row, you need to make sure that it is tight enough so that you're not going to get ladders running up the side of your sock. So I always knit the first stitch and then I give it a nice tug so that it will pull those two stitches together. You can also do it again when you after you do your increase. So here, here's my increase. Put it on and then give it a little tug so I can sweep back through on this side. Then right before I do that stitch, I should um, give another little tug on that first stitch just to, just to help it out. And knit all the way across.
And here's my next increase. And now I'm ready to do a plain knit round. So that's all you're going to do. So I will um, go ahead and finish up these increases or do it so that I have a little bit more of a, of a toe here so that I can take a gauge. And then once I um, have enough to do my gauge, then I will come back and show you how to measure your gauge and how to calculate how many stitches you would need in your sock. Okay, so now we have a piece that's um, large enough where we can measure our stitch gauge. And to do this, all we're going to do is, like any other stitch gauge, you will just take your ruler and count the number of stitches in the inch. Now, I understand that this um, swatch, that is our toe, is not as big as it normally would be if you were doing your a gauge swatch outside of the toe. But I find that, that the toe is enough of a swatch that I can calculate my stitch count based on this. So all you're going to do is count your stitches between an inch. And I do recommend, like any other swatch, um, when you're checking your gauge, to, to measure at different places along, you know, around your the area. On the front, maybe on the back, whatever works for you. Now, I have found that in this piece, I get um, nine and a half stitches, approximately nine and a half stitches per inch. Now, also, we talked about the foot circumference of eight, of eight inches. That's my foot circumference. Now, I like to have negative ease in my socks because I like my socks to be nice and snug on my feet. So, instead of calculating a, a uh, circumference of 8 inches, I'm going to use the 7.5. Now, maybe you don't want negative ease on your socks. Then you would probably want to stick to the 8, the, the eight inch or whatever your foot circumference is. Or maybe you don't want to have as much negative ease and you will calculate based on 7.75. You have to decide what works best for you and how you like your socks to fit. This is why I came up with this whole calculation system because I like my socks to fit one way. You might like to, your socks to be loose and baggy. You have to decide what you like. So based on your foot circumference and whether you want positive or negative ease, you need to figure out what measurement you're going to work with. For instance, okay, so I have 9.5 stitches per inch and I'm going on the measurement of 7.5 inch circumference of my foot so that the sock is um, snug on my feet. So I will take uh, 9.5 times 7.5 and that gives me a total number of stitches that needs to be in my sock of 71.25. Now, we need to divide this in half because we have two separate sections of the sock. We have the front and the back. So we'll divide this by two, and obviously we can't do a half of a, of a stitch. We have to either round up to 34, or we have to round down to, or I'm sorry, round up to 36, or round down to 34, because we cast on an even number of stitches. Now, if we had cast on an odd number of stitches when we started, then we could get to 35, and then that would be fine. But we cast on an even number, so in order to make sure that we have increases evenly on both sides, we want to keep those increases. So in this case, I'm going to round down to 34 stitches instead of rounding up to 36. Now, when I talk about these, this sti these stitches, we're talking about one side only. So we're going to have 34 stitches or a total of 68 all the way around the sock. Which brings us to the next section. This, here's where you can fill in your calculations. So my total um, number of stitches for my sock is gonna be 68 with 34 stitches per section. And here I've just written down that I cast on 14 stitches or that's 14 stitches on one side and a total of 28 stitches. So I need to go ahead and increase a couple more rows because I only have 30 stitches here. So. I have to increase, um, do two more increase rows with the knit rows in between. 
and then I will come back and we'll finish up this section. So I decided to go ahead and let you see the increases one more time. I still have one more increase row to go here, and I'm going to show you one more time again with the increases. So you knit the first stitch, and then you lift the bar between the stitches and place it on your your left needle and you kind of just tug it forward just a little bit so that you can get your needle in and around. And again, this is just because I like to um, make sure my increases are all look the same on both sides. I'll, I'll show you what I mean when I get to the end of the row. But if you don't, if again, if you don't care that they look slightly different, then you can do your increase any way you like. Um, I'm just a stickler about having it look the same on both sides. So then I will knit across all the stitches on this side of the foot. And at one stitch, I will increase again by lifting sticking the left needle in to the front of the stitch and knitting to the back loop. That just twists the stitch. When you pick up those bars, you need to make sure that you twist that stitch uh, to make sure that there's no gaps. Um, let me just do this one side and then I'll show you what I mean along the edge and having both of them look the same. So again, I'm going to make a left leaning increase here. and knit across. When I get to the end here, I will increase again by lifting the bar and slipping it and knitting through the back loop. Okay, so let me show you here what I mean. When you look at the sock from this angle, you can see how I have a nice line that's going straight up the side of my sock, the toe of my sock. Now, understand that nobody's really going to be looking at the side of your sock like that, but I can see it, so I like it to look nice. So that's what the side of the, the toe looks like. So at this point, um, once you have all your increases, actually I do have one more row that I need to um, do my final knit row after I've done my increase row, so I'll have to do that. But after I finish that knit row, then I'm ready to start the foot of the sock. Now, I am probably just going to make these plain stockinette socks, but maybe you want to add a pattern to your socks, and this is where you would start adding it on the top of your foot. Uh, based on your stitch count, um, you can either find a pattern that works exactly with that stitch count, or maybe you might have to adjust your stitches slightly so that it works with the, with the stitch count. Again, I'm just going to do a straight stockinette for this. But I still need to know where I'm going to stop the foot to start the short row heel. And that's where the um, charts come in again, the spreadsheets or the, the pattern that I have here. And my foot measurement, if we go back to the first sheet, my foot measurement was nine inches. And again, I like to have my sock a little bit snug, but what I can do is I can measure my toe because my toe is going to be about the same depth as my um, heel. And depending on how many stitches you cast on, if you cast on 10 stitches or whatever, you're, it's going to be a little bit deeper. But depending on how many stitches you cast on is going to depend on how deep your heel is going to be because you're probably going to decrease to that same number of stitches. So in this case, my um, my toe is almost um, one and three quarter inches. But because I like to have my sock snug, I'm going to go based on um, basically uh, one and a half to two. So I'm going to start my heel when I when my foot measures between seven and seven and a half inches. Okay, so I will start 
working up my foot and then when I can measure my sock and it is seven and a half, seven to seven and a half inches, that's when I'm going to stop and do my heel. And um, you can also fill that in on this section here on the foot section. Um, it's, in this case, I'm going to go one and a half to two inches shorter than my desired overall foot length. So that's the beginning of our sock. So now you have all the uh, information that you need in order to create your toe and then work up your foot. And then the next tutorial we'll be going through how to do the short row heel. And then uh, following that, we'll go through the leg and then uh, the cast off. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get your sock started on a magic loop, on a toe up sock with a magic loop. Please check back next time for the next section, which will be the uh, short row heel. Thanks for watching. Bye. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. One thing that I forgot to mention when I was starting the tutorial is that when I start a new sock, I always take my 100 gram ball of yarn and um, first I wind it into one cake. And then what I do is I take my digital scale that goes down to a hundredth of a, um, a, a hundredth of a, I think it's a gram, a hundredth of a gram. Is that right? I think it's a hundredth of a gram. So I, it, go, it, it's a, it goes down to a small amount. So I can split the skein. And what I do is I put the, um, the, the one big cake on my scale. And then I pull from the center and I put it back on my ball wonder and I start, start winding off. But before I start winding off, I weigh the ball to find out exactly how much it weighs and then figure out what halfway would be. Then I keep that cake on the, um, the scale and then I want start winding off onto the ball winder again. And as soon as I get to the halfway point, I cut the, um, the yarn and then I have two equal portions so that I can work on both socks at the same time. As you know, if you've watched the show for a while, I like to work on both of my socks at the same time. I'll work up my, my toe on the first sock on Magic Loop and I then I'll work up the toe on the second sock on Magic Loop. Two separate needles but um, at the same time. And then I'll work up the foot on both, and then the heel on both, and then the leg, and so forth. It, <clears throat> it keeps me from having second sock syndrome. I, it does mean that I have to have um, two needles all the time um, in order to do that. But I have lots of needles, so and I, most of my socks are done on zeros. And I want to say that I probably have like at least five or six pairs pairs of um, size zero circular needles for magic loop. So I could have basically si uh, six pairs of socks on the needles at the same time, which I rarely do. Sometimes I'll have two or three, but rarely do I have more than that. But I've tried different brands of um, needles. Currently I'm using my um, the new carbon needles. But I also have my Knit Picks, and I also have the Haya Hayas. So I've tried different needles over the, over the years, so I have lots of different ones. So that's what I typically do, uh, just because I like to have them both going at the same time. And by doing them toe up, I can start at the toe. If I have equal balls, I can start at the toe and work up until I'm almost out of yarn and then do the cast off. Usually I work about seven and a half to eight inches of the leg and then do about another inch and a half or so, inch and a half to two inches of cuff. It just depends on, you know, what, what strikes my fancy at that time. But that's what I typically do when I start a pair of socks. And so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and I hope it will help you get started on knitting socks or at least get started on knitting toe up socks. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Okay, last but not least, um, a quick mention about a few sponsors for Knittopia 2013. As I already mentioned, I have been busy working on planning for Knittopia. Most of my planning now is just 
finalizing our itinerary for the weekends and organizing the donations, working on the direct directory booklets. That's what I was doing at work today was working on the directory booklet, uh, just trying to get everything set up and um, information entered, transferred over and whatnot. It's going to be busy. I Again, I'm trying to get all of the stuff done well in advance, but not too far in advance that if something changes, I can still make changes to the, to the directory. But I'd like to get everything done well in advance so I don't have to stress over it. So the, um, the vendors this week that I'm going to mention for Knitopia 2013 are the Knitting Guild of America, Quince & Company, Purple Goddess Designs, Knitting's My Bag, and Andrea Wong. So go and check out those vendors. Uh, everyone has been so generous in donating this year. Um, every year I am, I, I think I'm going to not get enough donations. And this year I did go out and purchase quite a bit of things, but we still have gotten some very generous donators this year, and so um, I really appreciate that. And I hope you will take the time to go and visit their websites, see what products they have available, and possibly make your own purchase as well. So, and we do still have week midweek spots for Knitopia 2013 if you would like to join us. Also, um, we have day spots available as well. I will only be taking registrations for midweek spots or day spots up until March 15th. That would be next Friday. After March 15th, there's no more, no more, um, I'm going to close all registrations for 2013. So if you are considering it, if you're thinking about it, make your decision now and get in contact with me if you would like to join us for Knitopia 2013. Okay, and that's all I've got for you this week. Um, it was a quick show as far as my end goes. The tutorial was um, a little bit longer, but um, still a short show overall. So I hope you enjoyed the show today, and I hope you will stop back next week to see what's in store for you next week. I'm hoping, again, I'm hoping that I can get the um, tutorial done for the... Um, over dyeing. I have to do a little bit of experimentation before I can actually do the over dyeing, but I'm hoping that I can have a chance to do that this weekend on top of all of my steps and drywalling. We'll see how that goes because I think my steps are going to be um, 28,000 for tomorrow and 30, I think they're 32,000 for Sunday. So it's going to be a busy weekend. So I hope you guys have a great weekend and a great week, and I will talk to you next week. So bye for now.